Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We left off having just set things up so that we could use React in our application. And we did that just by copying some code in. Uh, we have this, turns out the, the real functionality that's going on here is in this React DOM render. This winds up occurring in all of the applications that use React. Of course, if this were a large application, we would split, split this over multiple files. We would have aspects of it exported from various files and we need to import them in this main file. But this says that we want to render to the DOM an element and the type of element that we want is hello, which is declared up here. We pass in some information. We'll talk more about what that is in just a second. And these would be uh, children that would be specified uh, for this. And then we tell it where to put that element. And in this case, we got it, we told it to go into the React root. So that one div that we have in our, in our view for the version four, this one div gets the contents that are specified here. So, I mentioned in the previous video, React uses this concept of components. And this is one of two ways to create a component. We'll introduce the other way in, in a bit once you have enough information that it makes sense. Uh, the first way is to make a class. That class extends React component and it has to have at least one method in it, and that method is the render method. And the render method needs to give back a React element, which we can create using uh, React create element. Turns out we're gonna do that a lot, so I am going to come in here. Uh, I'm actually gonna call it CE for create element. And we're going to do that so that we can simply replace these with CEs. Otherwise, I know I'm going to have typos in those. Okay. <laughs> um, so our render here returns a created element of a div that has the contents, hello, and then whatever was passed in. Okay, so the stuff that's passed in the second argument to create element is what's called the properties. And so if you're attempting to follow along in the React documentation, components and properties. Uh, whatever properties get passed in are stored in this.props, and we can see that here. It accesses this.props and then pulls out one member of it, which happens to be the only thing that was specified in the properties here. This isn't passing anything as properties, it is simply specifying a child to, uh, to put under this div element. And that's basically how the original introduction worked there. Uh, these components are intended to be immutable, uh, and when you're dealing with properties, the properties themselves are immutable. Changing, attempting to change this dot props to what will have no effect on on the element that is rendered. That is specified when it is created. Um, there are aspects of the components that you can change, and in some ways, kind of, uh, they are referred to as state. So we have properties, which are the immutable aspects that are passed into our component to start off with. And then we also have state. And so state is uh, something that the, the component itself creates and that can be modified. In this case, we don't have any state associated with this. Uh, if you want to have state, it needs to be set up in a constructor for your class. Now that constructor needs to call the supertype 
with props, which should be passed in here. So the properties, whatever this object is here, will be is uh, passed into the constructor, and we need to call the super type with that value. In addition, uh, we can set up state. So for example, this dot state equals, and then whatever values we want to have in our state here. I don't necessarily uh, have anything. How about we make a click count that starts off at zero uh, with the idea that the hello will be followed by a click count that has our value in here. And we can get this simply by saying uh, this.state.click count. Now, of course, nothing is changing that right now, but we can go look at our page and we should have a slightly different component has a click count of zero, as one would expect from this. Okay, um, if you don't have any state in your component, for example, our original hello did not have any state, there is a shorthand form that you can use. Instead of declaring a class and making it extend a React component, we just write a function. So a stateless hello would just be a function that takes in the props. As with the render method, it needs to return a single element. And so we might return, and I'm going to use my shorthand for create element, our div that has no props passed to it, and has the same this dot props dot to what? We could actually add that uh, add that in um, when you let's see. So this is just doing a render of that. Let's make sure. I'm just going to go ahead and nest this inside of another CE that makes a div, passes null properties, and I'm going to copy this one. So after the type of element that you are creating, which can be the name for an HTML element, or it can be the name of a class or a function, if it is stateless, you then have the properties. And it turns out the children is a uh, variable length argument list. And so we can make this a stateless hello that also has a to what of world. So this version will come first, followed by this version. They're both in divs. Oh, clearly I have a typo somewhere. I cannot read property to what of undefined. which happened on line six. Oh, that's right. When you do this as a function, there is no this. Okay, so I got hello world both times. Um, and of course this didn't have to say world. We could change it to make it clear that it's being built differently. Um, and so this is your short form when you have no state, if you don't have any state on things, and it's actually recommended that most of your components as much as possible don't have state. It makes them simpler, easier to work with, potentially easier to, to reuse as well. When you have state, you need to use the class form, 
your state needs to be initialized in the constructor and then you can use it. Now we haven't talked about how to change it yet. Uh, there is a set state method. You should not, and let's see, I'm going to make a method that will be useful in our, in our next video. We haven't talked about how to handle uh, clicking, but I'll start writing a method because that's what we're going to do. Um, you are not supposed to do something like this dot state dot click count plus equals one or plus plus. That is not, that is not how this works. Um, instead, you say this dot set state because it turns out when you uh, when you change the state, it effectively rebuilds the component. Turns out it doesn't rebuild it from the beginning. It doesn't pass the props back in and call the, the constructor, uh, but it goes through and changes, it redoes the, the rendering. And so this dot state dot click count plus one will be the new state when we click. Um, so when this gets called, the call to set state basically will reconstruct this component, which winds up redoing a render in here. We'll come back in the next video. We'll talk a little bit more about what's going on with the set state and figure out how we're going to invoke the click handler.